Hello and welcome to the Board Game Society. Today, I'll show you a new solo challenge for the game Mombasa. If you haven't already seen the rules and setup video, I invite you to do so. Otherwise, let's get started with this solo challenge. After setting up the game, we will take the 10 starting tiles, shuffle them face down, choose two random tiles and select one for yourself and one for your opponent. We will then finish the setup according to the indications on each of the starting tiles. Looking at our starting tile, this particular one gives us a bonus of 2 on the Mombasa track. It then shows you which cards to remove from our starting deck in order to start the game. We have a banana value of 2, a cotton value of 2, and an explorer value of 1. Go ahead and remove them from your deck. We will then position them below our player board. The below position represents the cards that we will play and the top part is where the discarded cards will go. For this example, we'll place the cards on top. We will play the cards on the bottom and at the end of each round they will move to the top of our player board and be discarded. At the start of each round we will choose one deck to keep for the next round. It's an interesting aspect of the game, correctly managing your cards, where to put them, where to use them. We will then do the same thing for our opponent. He must discard a cotton value of 2 a second cotton value of 1, and an explorer value of 1. His starting tile indicates a plus 3 on a St. Louis track, so pretty close to getting an action from this company already. Game setup is finished for both players, completing the Mombasa action as well as the St. Louis action. We are ready to start the game. As you'll see, there's a lot of complexity, but the game runs smoothly. There isn't a lot of text, it's all iconography. It's all the same themes. The only difference for the solo challenge is that we will keep the balance of the starting tiles. They will be used for the opponent's action. You can set it aside next to his player board. We can then choose our actions from our starting deck, placing them face up below our player board. The position of our actions is important, depending on which deck we would like to keep for the next round. We'll go for an explore action, as well as two investments for the coffee company. I am only allowed three actions because the additional slots on my player board are still locked. As for our opponent, we'll go ahead and shuffle his starting deck and deal three cards face down. Going on to the planning phase, after doing our regular actions, we will draw an additional starting tile and give it to our opponent. We will then do his actions indicated on the tile. The three icons on the top left will represent the companies that will expand. The banana icon represents Cape Town and the expansion icon represents Mombasa. You will find the same symbols on the appropriate advancement track. The opponent's tile removes one building from Cape Town, a red building, that we will put aside as we will not be able to use it for the remainder of the game. We will do the same with the Mombasa icon on the starting tile. We will always remove the building from left to right, then from top to bottom. Following that, we will move forward three spaces his token on the appropriate track, as his starting tile indicates plus three on the Mombasa track. Finally, look at the right side of the starting tile for matching symbols, disregarding the numbers, and advance the ink jar according to the matching symbols. In this case, we advance the ink jar by one for matching coffee symbols. We cannot go further as there are no more books on the bookkeeper track. 
This completes the opponent's starting tile actions we can do for this turn. We then proceed to the planning phase, taking our deck and positioning our cards below our player board. We are playing alone, so we can place the cards face up. As for the opponent, we take his deck, shuffling it and placing his cards face up as well, either face down before we select our cards or face up after us. In this case, he passed the 15 shares icon on the diamond track, unlocking one additional action card. At the start of the game, the opponent is always the starting player. The first thing he will do is always verify if he has the majority of shares that are identified on the game board. In this case, he has majority over the cotton, has equal rights to the coffee, and has minority for the bananas. He cannot do the banana action. He could do the coffee action as well as a cotton action, but because the coffee is blocking me, meaning the opponent has equal rights, it will always be the first action to do. He will do all the goods card actions in connection with the companies. His first goods card action will always be to take the majority action from his cards. Although, if I have the same amount of goods card, in this case coffee, the opponent will simply come and block my investment possibilities in the coffee company. Placing his token on the coffee company will look at the minimum investment required to move up the company track. He has the minimum of one investment. If he had three, he would have moved up three spaces. In this case, he moves up two on the Cairo company track. We then do our goods card actions. When his turn comes again, since he still has a majority in his goods card, he will perform that action first. In this particular case, the minimum investment number required for the cotton is two. He simply will not be performing this action. He cannot use the banana goods card, so he will continue with his regular turn. As for the expansion action, when played, he will always explore the starting tile icon used for this turn. Here, he explores Mombasa. Each turn, a new starting tile is placed for your opponent. A new company will come out, and the majority of his actions will be done in conjunction with the board for the company on the starting tile. When playing the expansion cards, the opponent will always expand the territories directly in front of the given company, then always expand the territories the closest to the actual company. Always take in the corresponding buildings following the horizontal, then vertical lines, placing his tokens directly in front of the company. He has one left, he could take any of them, but we will always prioritize the territories that give bonuses on the diamond or bookkeeper track. With the other expansion point remaining, he could choose left or right. Left giving him money, or right advancing his ink jar on the bookkeeper track. He would go right. The expansion is always in correlation with the starting tile company, here Mombasa. Then taking his farthest to the right book, we will choose an additional book with the two matching symbols. Here, it's banana and coffee. If the additional books do not have both matching symbols, then take one book with at least one matching symbol and in the appearing order. In this case, the additional book matches both banana and coffee, which we will place on the next open book slot. Don't forget that you cannot put an A book on slots that have an A crossed out. First action will always be the goods card majorities, then finishing the remainder of the actions. When placing the action cards below the opponent's player board, always place them according to the number on the bottom right of the card, as well as the order they appear on the game board. First would be the bookkeeper, then the diamond dealer, following with the expansion cards. In this scenario, the expansion cards would go first, followed by the same order the cards are now. Action order would then be expansion, coffee investment, banana investment, and cotton investment. I'll then show you how to shop at the market or card display. When placing the opponent's cards, we of course take into consideration the number on the bottom right of the cards. Normally, the characters are always placed first, but we have to count the sum of all cards with the same symbol. In this case, the coffee cards total three, which is higher than the expansion card. We then finish placing the cards according to the regular rules. If and when we shop at the card display, we start with a value of three from the coffee cards. When selecting a card for the opponent from the card display, 
always choose cards that give you end of game bonuses for particular companies. Here we have for a cost of 4 a card that gives us a Cairo company action, for a cost of 3 an action for Cape Town, and for 3 a Mombasa action. Looking at the opponent's starting tile, we will prioritize this particular action. In this case, taking his value of 3 and buying the Mombasa card. Then following the regular actions, he will do his expansion card for 2, then the remaining banana card with a value of 2. Since there are no companies for Cape Town, he will buy in the same order as the symbols appear on the board. Bookkeeper, Diamond Dealer, Expansion Cards, and finally the resources. Always prioritizing the total value of the card of 3 before a value of 1. In this scenario, we have a banana value of 2. The opponent will therefore buy the character with the same buying value of 2 as the character is above the other cards on the appearance track on the board. When starting another round, you will take the gold token and place it below the bookkeeper token. Now, when obtaining this particular bookkeeper token, you gain an additional gold coin. When the time comes to selecting the opponent's additional bookkeeper token, he will, as previously mentioned, take the one with the matching symbols. If there is a book with a banana and coffee icon in this case, he'll take that one. Currently, there is none. He will then select a book with a banana icon. Always remember the buying value indicated by the number in the blue box above the book token. If he doesn't have enough money, he will then choose a banana icon on the right side of the book token. When there is multiple options, he will always take the token with the gold. So first, the opponent will take the matching symbol. Second will be the order of the symbols. Third will be one matching symbol with priority to a book with gold. If none are available, then start from the top left going down, and so on and so forth taking the first available book to place on his player board. When the opponent uses his expansion card, totaling several points, he will always take the first available horizontal building. He will always explore directly in front of the company, followed by the territories touching the same company. For one point, he would go here. Then for a second point, he would take a territory adjacent to the already explored outpost, not forgetting to prioritize a territory that gives him bonuses. For a third point, he would take this one for a gold point. He would then explore the last territory touching the company for a fourth point. In the case of a fifth expansion point, he could not go here because it takes a value of 2. He could choose this one or this one, but we always take the first line closest to the company, following the horizontal lines for the buildings. I would put the last expansion point here. It is important to note that if there is already an outpost for another company, you need an additional expansion point. Here's another scenario you could encounter in the case of an expansion card. We will of course always expand according to the starting tile in play. In this scenario, he expands Cape Town for two, taking one building and placing it directly in front, allowing him to advance one on the company track and one on the diamond track. Second expansion point, he will place it to the closest horizontal territory available, giving him an additional bookkeeper token of a value of 2. When we have a book value of 2 or more, we will look as always if there is a book available with the same two symbols. Second prerequisite is the order of the symbols, but looking at the books with a value of 2 first. In this case, there is a book token with cotton and banana at a value of 2. In the case of a book value of 3 on the explored territories, we would take the same tile as the previous example, 
but for any additional book value, we would take the corresponding gold token available below the book market. In this case, we would take a book value of two and one gold to add to our supply. To resume his available goods card actions, he will always take the majority of his investments available and block us if he can. He will then proceed to his card display actions depending on his available cards. And finally, he will place his other tokens following the board priority. He will take the first player token, even if he already has it, alongside a book value of 1. Following that, if he has enough money, he will proceed to buy an additional card from the card display. If it isn't available, he will proceed to the next one, which is to discard the highest card in his hand to gain the corresponding gold coins. Finally, he will start here to gain additional resources that are attributed to the cards with the most value or the first cards to appear below his player board. First action will always be the companies followed by the first player token going down and finishing with the additional resources to gain. On the other hand, if during the game the opponent unlocks an additional action from any given company, so if his token passes the additional action icon marked on any company track, it will always be those actions that will be done before the card display actions as they are more beneficial. The majority investments are always done first, followed by any additional actions provided they are unlocked and that the opponent can do them. If there is more than one additional action available, the opponent will always do the one with the highest number, in this case 17 before 7. If there are even more actions unlocked, you still follow the given number. 17, 15, 7, and 5. If he is here, he can't do this one. Therefore, he goes to the next one available. If he can discard a coffee card, he will do this action. If he can't, he will go to the next one. This one as well. If the opponent doesn't have enough money, he will go to the next additional action available. Finally, you can complete the remainder of the actions on the board. So you'll understand that with all these possibilities, since the opponent advances each turn on a different track depending on the given starting tile, the game will develop itself in a non-linear way, more of a combination of all four companies, which will force us to diversify our approach to not only concentrate on one resource, but a combination of all four you'll see that the opponent will score a lot of points making this challenge worthwhile. I invite you to try the solo challenge. Stay tuned for a full game review in which I will explain further details and more strategies for Mombasa. Now, it's your turn.